the same water that existed on earth billions of years ago still exists. It covers most of the planet, but just 3% is fresh water. But most of that is ice. Less than 1% of all fresh water is readily accessible for human use. Even out of that, fresh water only less than 0.007% is drinkable. In the 20th century, the world's population tripled. But the use of water grew six times. Our water sources are under great pressure. Natural water, so pure and pristine. But human civilization over the ages has contaminated the water by discharging various pollutants and disease-causing pathogens in water. Because of the water pollution only, one in five don't have access to safe drinking water. According to the United Nations, a child dies from water-related diseases every 15 seconds. Diseases caused by contaminated water are typhoid, cholera, diarrhea, jaundice, giardiasis, amoebiasis, paratyphoid, gastroenteritis, and many more. Most of the rural areas suffer from a lack of treated water. Hence, the local population is forced to seek water from sources like ponds, rivers, and wells, which are contaminated. In urban areas, some of the people treated water, but most of them have to contend with groundwater or untreated water. This source is most of the time contaminated by sewage discharge. Chlorine is consumed in the process of killing microorganisms. The only way you can know that your water is pure is by checking the chlorine content in the water. If there is a very little bit of chlorine in your water, then it is pure. This balanced chlorine is called the residual chlorine. The presence of residual chlorine indicates that all pathogens have been killed. The residual chlorine tries to keep the water from bacteria recontamination. As per a World Health Report of 1980, the people who were affected by diarrhea was more than 4,000 million, and the people who die out of the same is more than 2.5 million. This is much more than people who die in wars or natural calamities. It's time to give water a second chance to become pure once again. Chlorination is the only most economical, easy, and user-friendly way to disinfect water so it plays the most important part in a safe water system. It is important to know how chlorine kills the pathogenic organism. It surrounds the organism, oxidizing its cell wall. Chlorine then penetrates the organism and upsets the natural life cycle process or by altering the cell enzymes. The end result is that the organism dies or cannot reproduce, making the water bacteriologically safe. These are some of the dangerous bacteria present in water. This is a collection of data from research papers regarding the effect of chlorine on inactivating some of the bacteria. For example, let us take the case of Escherichia coli, or more commonly called as E. coli. It only takes 0.2 mg of chlorine in 1 litre of water or 0.2 ppm of chlorine in just 3 minutes to kill 99.99% .99 of the bacteria. This is data regarding the effect of chlorine on inactivating some of the viruses. Here also let us take the example of hepatitis virus, which causes jaundice. 0.4 mg of chlorine in 1 litre of water or 0.4 parts per million of chlorine in 1 minute can kill 99.99% of the virus. A protozoa is stronger, hence would require more chlorine and more time to kill them. Water can be disinfected using different technology, like chlorine gas, bleaching powder or commercial sodium hypochlorite, reverse osmosis or ultraviolet radiation, sodium hypochlorite produced in-house using an electrochlorinator. The cost of gas chlorination system with all its safety systems is high. It requires highly trained manpower. It is normally established where large quantity of water has to be treated the major disadvantage being the danger of handling toxic gas. Large quantity of bleaching powder or hypo has to be kept in stock. 
These chemicals are not easily available at all sites. The strength of chlorine in hypo and bleaching powder rapidly reduce making the chemical useless after some time. As both chemicals are highly alkaline, it tends to increase the pH of water. These systems are expensive and high in maintenance. Suitable to treat only small quantities of water. Water treated by RO or UV systems does not have any residual disinfectant to keep the water from getting recontaminated. So they are not good if the treated water has to be stored. Electrochlorinator just need salt, water and electricity to produce sodium hypochlorite. The chemistry of the reaction shall be NaCl that is common salt and H2O that is water is mixed and electricity is passed through the salt solution. The first reaction will be the formation of NaOH that is sodium hydroxide commonly known as caustic soda and Cl2 which is chlorine. Immediately a secondary reaction takes place between NaOH and Cl2 to form NaOCl which is sodium hypochlorite and H2 which is hydrogen. Sodium hypochlorite thus formed is a strong disinfectant. The chemical reaction can be explained more graphically. When DC current is passed through two titanium electrodes immersed in salt solution, sodium hypochlorite is formed. We manufacture different types and capacities of electrochlorinators to meet almost all the different needs and applications. There are two basic types of electrochlorinators. A simple version is called a batch type electrochlorinator. In a tank, a measured quantity of salt and water are mixed. A titanium electrolyzer is fixed inside the tank. DC current from a rectifier controller is passed through the electrolyzer. This converts the salt water into sodium hypochlorite. It takes 8 hours to convert all the salt to hypo. So an electronic timer is provided in the rectifier controller which shuts off after producing the required amount of hypo. The second type is more advanced continuous production type. This is an automatic system where salt and water are mixed automatically and fed into a titanium electrolyzer. Salt water is instantly converted to sodium hypochlorite and filled into a hypo tank. Once the tank is full, the system stops automatically. Instead of salt water, seawater can also be directly used to produce sodium hypochlorite. Our compact chlorinator is one of the smallest batch type chlorinator which can produce 60 grams of chlorine which can disinfect about 30 to 50 thousand liters of water. Salt and water are put in the top chamber and the power is switched on. In 8 hours, the salt water is converted to sodium hypochlorite which is transferred to the bottom tank. From here, the hypo is dosed by help of dosing pump. Our batch process electrochlorinators are designed to produce up to 400 grams per hour of chlorine. In remote areas where no electricity is available, electrochlorinator can be operated using the solar power. The electrolyzer is made of titanium and coated with mixed metal oxides of platinum. Titanium is welded using a special process. Our continuous production models start from a low capacity wall mounted type. Our medium range continuous production chlorinators are compact and fully automatic. Our high capacity range start from 500 grams per hour and go up to 500 kilograms per hour systems. They can either operate with brine solution that is salt and water or seawater. These systems are well designed and supplied in skids reducing the erection very high capacity systems produce sodium hypochlorite from either seawater or from brine solution. These systems are supplied with related pumps, brine dilution system, storage tanks, hydrogen venting system, PLC control panels, hypodosing pumps and required acid cleaning system. Our systems are manufactured as per international standards and have been inspected by various leading inspection agencies. The major application is the disinfection of drinking water. Because sodium hypochlorite kills all the pathogenic organisms and prevents the water from recontamination. Sodium hypochlorite has a wide application in effluent and sewage treatment. All cooling water applications 
use sodium hypochlorite to control algae growth in water. For sanitation and disinfection in various industries, hospitals and hotels. It is useful in controlling algae growth in any water body and keeps the water clean. Good, pure water creates a healthy and a prosperous nation.